A Jamaica Poor No More, the title of a book written by a Jamaican, Michael Irving Phillips, who sees a way forward for Jamaica and maybe the Caribbean without poverty. I'll talk with him up next on Carib Nation. Welcome to Carib Nation, I'm Darius Dean. My guest today is Michael Irving Phillips, a Jamaican who has followed the economic policies and the social standing in Jamaica for many years and has written another book about the way he sees Jamaica without poverty. Thank you so much for joining me, Michael Phillips. Welcome to Carib Nation. Hello, Darius. Uh, I'm very glad to be here and thanks for inviting me. It's nice to talk with you again after a long time. I know you've written quite a few books since uh, the last time we talked. You one about the rat race that we're all facing. Yeah, well, I've written at least three books on sort of related subjects. They're all tied together. The first one was Boycott Money and Save Your Soul, Launching the Goodwill Revolution. And the next one was Leave the Rat Race to the Rats. Yeah, And this one now, uh, focusing on Jamaica's problems, solving Jamaican problems, a Jamaica poor no more. Yeah. Oh, um, it struck me that you pulled out Jamaica. And of course, this formula could probably be used anywhere in the Caribbean because Jamaica is at present a microcosm, I suppose, of what the entire region is. Well, and well, not just the Caribbean any poor country and I, uh, you know, I look around and poor countries are basically Latin American countries and African countries. And there seems to be an acceptance that they will be poor forever. And I, I really resented that. And I don't think that is necessary. And so my book is Jamaica will be a model for those other countries. And as you say, um... We also have to recognize the origins of some of this. Um, when we go back in history and look at colonialism yes. and why the Caribbean and some of these other countries are in the state that they are, um, it makes it even more infuriating that we are sort of destined in the Caribbean to be in this status. As you say, we have moved from being called underdeveloped to third world. Well, we're, we're developing countries. And now we're nice, developing, yeah. Nice euphemism, but we never seem to develop. You know, when we look at countries like, like Ivory Coast, I, the Ivory Coast and, and those Africans provide about 75% of the world's chocolate and the chocolate corporations like Nestle's and Cadbury and Hershey are rich and those countries are poor employing slave labor kids to pick coffee, cocoa. Mm -hmm. You know, they, this is, you go to a country like the Congo, which provides all the uh, cobalt necessary for cell phones. And the cell phone companies are rich and, and the Congo is poor. Something is wrong here. And this is typical all over the so-called developing world. Yeah, and, they, they take their natural resources from these rich countries and, and find a way to develop them. And uh, rather than help the poor countries develop their own resources, it's all about how much they can take out of them. Well, not, they basically take out the resources uh, and that is a big part of the problem. And then they use the resources to keep rich. We have got, we cannot be exporting our resources uh, just like that. And, and we have got to develop our own resources or what, or add value to the things that we do. Uh, and we send them out without value and the other countries mm -hmm. make the corporations make big profits from them. And I, I, I think this is 
will make us for, poor forever if we keep doing that. Well, they sell those products. They refine the products and sell them back to us. Right. <laughs> we pay the price for it in the end. I remember uh, sugar. We used yes. to develop sugar and send it to, to England. England makes granulated sugar. They or, took all the molasses out of it and sold it back yeah. to us and told us that white sugar was yeah. better. I'll yeah. never forget the day that I realized that as a young person working in England. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, once upon a time, Jamaica was the leading producer of bauxite. And now we are not in the, in the running. Uh, did that make us rich? No. And now we, we are way down. We are not among the leaders in the production of bauxite. Our banana industry is a thing of the past, thanks to uh, World Trade Organization removing and the, the European Union bananas. Sugar industry is pretty much dead. Uh, you know, we uh, how we are even surviving is a marvel to me. Well, that that's, I was going to come to that the fact that the Caribbean. And it shows you the resourcefulness of the people of the Caribbean. And if we can survive what we have survived, it means that we can use our talents and, and our expertise to develop our own countries. We come out to these countries, these big countries, we go to the schools and learn the techniques. And instead of going back to help develop our countries, we use the techniques to better the countries and the big corporations here. I'm going to give you an example. We used to have a railroad company, but it was government owned. We had passenger service and we had freight service. Now, along comes privatization and we sell the freight service. And the freight service is what was keeping the passenger service alive. And so we have no passenger railroad in Jamaica. The old railway stations are, are, are probably chicken coops now with the, uh, and why animals just you know, and, and what is the problem? The one that made money is the one the government sells and the one that loses money, they are stuck with and they cannot maintain it. This is typical. This is typical. And my primary suggestion to that problem is that the government has got to get more into the business of making money. Mm -hmm. Making money. Lots of people are making money in Jamaica. Corporations are making money in Jamaica. Co those big international corporations will not come to Jamaica unless they can make a lot of money. In all the poor countries, there are corporations making money. Well, we have got to compete with those corporations. And my primary suggestion for that is that Jamaica creates its own corporation, not civil service, because this corporation will run on corporation principles. We, we just made that big highway all around Jamaica. A very good job, but it does not produce money. It costs us money. We work like slaves to pay back for it. And that is typical. We have now got to invest. The government itself has got to invest in Jamaica to make money. Uh, well, do you think, um, when I look back, uh, you, you talk about, you have two concepts that I found interesting. Um, partnership with people. And you believe in, and you believe that the basis of that is the goodwill of people. Um, and I, I just recently, the Barbados Prime Minister launched a national training initiative where the goal is to make every Barbadian what they call a star Barbadian. Um, and then they start out by first uh, selecting people in each sector, uh, training them, uh, and then working with them to make sure that they're the best that they can be. Helping them to understand what it is to be the best that you can be. And by being the best that you can be, you help make the country the best that they can be. You give the best of what you have. You then help everybody is working at their best. Well, I am a great admirer of Mayor Martin. 
I've written on Facebook about my admiration for her. And yeah. I think she's definitely on the right path. Yeah. And, uh, uh, one of the best leaders in the world. You know, I'm not going to limit limit leaders. We, we look towards the big, to United States and, and Europe. No, we have some of the most outstanding people in the world here like that. And we deserve to give them credit and appreciation for it. Now, uh, as I said, going back to, to making money, I'm talking about creating a Jamaican corporation, government corporation, and that corporation will be run like other corporations. Uh, and we will, I give an example of a real, in other words, the government will become the Amazon.com of Jamaica. It will be, it will grow. And, you know, one of the things about corporations is they're, drive is to make profits, extra profits, and they will exploit employees to do it. We, in our corporation, we I want to make modest example. profit, modest profit, and we want to make sure that employees won't be exploited in order to make that profit. Now, you know, uh, I, I got criticized uh, by a couple of people, oh, Jamaica can't run anything. They can't even run a patty shop, is, 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 which is, you know, they used to say when England had the Suez Canal, all the Egyptians would never be able to run the canal. They run it better than the British ever did. And, and if you look at Jamaicans have excelled, uh, I think high up in Home Depot, as I quote in my book, is a Jamaican mm -hmm. woman, that massive corporation there. We have the people who can do it. We're not going to be civil servants. We're not going to follow civil. We're going to follow corporation rules, and and we we'll start. We might need to hire foreign consultants temporarily, but ultimately we will get richer and richer. For example, if you know the car industry. This corporation could import cars. The biggest buyer of cars in Jamaica is the Jamaican government. We have ready-made cus customers there. We're going to repair them, the whole thing. And, and we're going to, you know, there are avenues to make money. One of the avenues that I mentioned there too, is ganja is the way. Marijuana, marijuana has been, marijuana was just legalized in the Congress here. Uh, Co Colorado, when it legalized marijuana, there was a tremendous jump in its income. And, and when I say marijuana, I'm not talking about sending out marijuana leaves. We have excellent uh, medical marijuana expert in Dr. Henry Lowe. We, got, we can go expand into medical marijuana right there in Jamaica. We're not exporting the leaves so other people can make money right. off it, you mm -hmm. know? And we have entrepreneur like Balram Vaswani, who actually went to Colorado and learned and saw for himself the Colorado experience. He has opened uh, uh, Kaya stores uh, like uh, vaping lounges that they have here. We've got to have that, that, that sort of thing in Jamaica where our government is out to make money and make money in an honorable way and make our government stronger and our people better served. Some of these um, concepts could have been looked at and, and in some cases uh, implemented some time ago. It, they could have taken small steps, some of these governments. And I wonder why they have refrained from tackling them. There's some people who believe that they're lazy some people who believe that the status quo is suiting them fine and so they don't want to, sh to change anything. And then there are others who are afraid that they will run into problems because of, of the opposition from people in, the, in their country because of, of change. I wonder what is your idea as to why some of the governments in the Caribbean and Jamaica included have been reluctant to be forthcoming and, and bold like Mia Motley, and just step outside the box. Well, I, I should be quick to point out that I'm not talking about nationalization uh, because that stirs up uh, 
automatic opposition by a lot of people that you're talking socialism. We are not yeah. nationalizing any company. We are forming a company to compete with existing company. We are just forming another corporation within the laws of existing laws of corporation. Uh, so I don't want people to think that I'm talking about nationalization because that is not it. We are just going to be another player on the box. And the, player, and the primary objective of our corporation is to provide in Jamaica with a better living, not just making profits. We have to make profits, but we're not going for the super profits by exploiting that, that many corporations do. Give everybody a comfortable livelihood, so to speak. So that you don't have the... Uh, Jamaica, I suppose, in, in comparison to most other islands, has the widest... Um, range of, of disparity between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, well, you know, one of the big problems, Jamaica had some other problems here, with, which I address in the book. And I'm going to get to the haves and the have-nots. Um, uh, and one of the big problems is crime. Mm -hmm. Crime is a very serious problem. Jamaica is not unique in that respect. Crime is a big problem almost everywhere. Right here in the United States, crime is a big problem. And uh, as I said, you know, we have the Jamaican diaspora, but a lot of the diaspora, I think, have been made exiles by crime. Right now, Jamaica is going with uh, states of emergency, of zones of emergency, and states of emergency have some temporary relief, but that is not a long-time solution. Uh, they tend to run into abuse of civil rights. The greatest victims of crimes are poor people, and the great the people who are ignored most by police are poor people. You know, there's a relationship there. I, I consider the poor as the cradle of crime. The, the, the criminals practice on the poor and they get better and they get more arrogant and then they move up and they, they get bolder. Crime. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've written, could I read a poem on, on, on crime? Sure. Lots of Jamaican diaspora are abroad because of crime. And this really? one is called Jamaica Exile. Imprisoned in my home, sweet home, behind iron bars that lets in the sunshine but keeps out crime is not for me anymore. For Jamaica bleeds, stabbed in the heart repeatedly by ruthless thugs of crime. And Jamaicans die and fear death even behind their iron bars that let in sunshine but keeps out crime. And because of these ruthless thugs of crime, Jamaicans leave, exiled to a foreign land to leave behind distrusted politicians, trapped in stereotypes to serve a cynical public, and hopelessly watch as crime plan after new crime plan fails. And even innocent children die and heartless thugs triumph. To leave behind their yam and sweet potato for foreign fast cholesterol filled food, leave behind their tropic nights filled with reggae music, leave behind their seas so blue before it turns red with the blood of Jamaica, before laughter turns to screams, before laughter turns to slaughter. To leave all that behind for exile in some uncaring foreign land for anonymity to adopt a foreign culture and live in the memory of a crime-free Jamaica without iron bars to let in sunshine and keep out crime. It is not a life without Jamaica. I am alive, but I'm not kicking. Do you think the politicians have their focus in the wrong direction? And, and it's all about not necessarily making the country better, but making themselves look better, their own power, that they've got caught up in the rat race, as you talk about. 
I have a great respect for Jamaican and Caribbean politicians, especially after what I see has happened in this country with Donald <laughs> Trump. You know? I mean, he, he, he makes yes. our politicians look like gods almost. Yes, you know? yes, uh, absolutely. One of the biggest problems, not only in Jamaica, as a matter of fact, Jamaica is not as bad as the other problem, is, is the division of people. Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> We have we look we have 80 million refugees in the world. People kicked out of their own country and, and the polarization along racial lines, religious lines, and all that. I mean, and this is one of the things that drove me to write my books. We are making all these technological advances. You know, we have computers doing all this work. We have almost have self-driving cars, and we have 80 over 80 million refugees. The million human science, beings we have not made any progress here. Yeah. Not enough progress in my mind. And yeah. Even I, I consider the criminals in Jamaica that are, are wreaking fear and havoc as, as, as traitors to Jamaica. They are making all of the islands bad. And, and uh, which leads me to the main theme of all my books, which is the Goodwill Revolution. The Goodwill Revolution is is a cultural revolution against our present system, which I consider, the, which I call the rat race, which is this, this addiction to get as much money as you can. And, and, and we are driven power. by that. And money and power, you're right. Material stuff. And that is what, uh, you know, and in, in that drive, if you're selfish, if you're mean, and if you're dishonest, you have a, bit, a good chance of, of <laughs> making it. If you're That's kind true. and generous and compassionate, those are liabilities. Yeah. We have got to have a system, a culture that rewards good deeds. And that's why I call it the goodwill revolution, which is goodwill to all. And I, I would like to see that as a, a national policy. You know, one of the big drawbacks about Jamaica is its class system. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a black person here in America where you get discriminated against race, I, I, I look back at the class system with a certain sense of embarrassment. And um, part of the class system is based on, a large part is based on things like money, house, car, power, you know, and, and poor people will never get that. And I think that is, that is a big division in our society. I don't think those are, in the good old revolution, we aimed at status is the, you know, the poor has, because of their lack of uh, all those symbols that we use, uh, are considered, have an inferiority complex. People look down on them. I said those, those, in the Goodwill Revolution, the, the qualities that we look for instead of those material things are virtues, things like honesty, integrity, kindness, uh, and that is what will give you status. Uh, um, and everybody can have it. Whether you're rich or poor, you can have those qualities. Moral superiority is, is what makes Mm -hmm. uh, a person better than the other person in the good old revolution. Well, you know, when you go back again to the source, it comes across, it comes, of course, from uh, our status uh, in colonialism. Yes. Uh, the, that it, that's the root of it all. That has been handed down and perpetuated from generation to generation. But when you look around, I think 2020 has taught us quite a few things. And when you look around, I think there seems to be uh, a yearning to go back to your goodwill revolution mentality. I think that they're, 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 we're beginning to turn, turn the corner. And I think people are beginning to see the importance of uh, inclusivity and equality and, and looking for the good in the other person. And well, so it, it, it may be slowly coming, but I think it's getting there. And, well, I, and that is what is going to take to turn things around. 
the strength of the goodwill revolution, I think, is that we're all inherently good. We are born good. And, and you know, as I say, you know, you do something bad, conscience tries to stop you. Mm-hmm. And even if you do something bad, you run it, you feel guilty and, and, and you have remorse. Of course, these things can be overcome. And uh, our society has pretty much, that rat race has undermined that natural goodness of man. And we need a culture that reinforces that goodness. And that is the goodwill revolution. I'm trying to reinforce the goodness of man. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting read and you have some interesting concepts, some of, many of which I think many people will agree with because we've been living through these, these um, scenarios in the last 50 years or so that most of us in the Caribbean have been uh, independent. And so let's hope that we get to the ears of the leaders in the Caribbean um, with the, the thrust that seems to be. I know, for instance, um, there is a, 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 a push to change the thinking of the multinational organizations right now, the IMF, the World Bank, and all of those that have traditionally, literally um, drained these countries and kept them hostage, as you said, by their stringent policies and and their loan practices. And so those are the things that um, I think the next generation is working harder on and is focused on. And hopefully this other half of this century will change things around. Uh, We won't be here to see it, but uh, I hope that our grandchildren will benefit from it. I sure hope so too. Um, well, we've just got to be more open-minded and and think out the box and right. and uh, and and realize who we think our friends are might not really be that friendly. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you so much for your book and uh, for the thinking behind it and for having the the fortitude to put it out there. And uh, we look forward to see what next you come up with. I'm sure you're thinking of something else. There's always something in the oven cooking where you're concerned. So I'm sure there'll be something else coming up. I hope so. But uh, right now I'm working on trying to publicize my book and the COVID-19 has not helped. Oh, yes. I'm That's true. So much by it. But I really have enjoyed chatting with you here. And I value the opportunity, Jaime. Likewise, thank you so much. And thanks to you for joining us on Carib Nation. I'm sure you have another way of thinking for the Caribbean in terms of poverty and how we can get out of poverty. Thanks again for joining us on Carib Nation. Until next time, I'm Doris D. And remember, our motto here is one people, one culture, one Caribbean, one nation.